Hey, good morning everyone. It is Saturday, October 7th, about 10.30 in the morning. I'm gonna take you through the last garden tour of the season because we are about to hit a frost. So let's go ahead and start on the porch. Oops, I'm walking into the uh, So the coleus is very, very tender. This um, already sort of struggling things are getting dry i'm not coming through and watering anymore with the hose and things like that because really we're looking at um our first light frost this week which will kill off a lot of this stuff that i have in the pots regardless of if they're watered or not they're looking really pretty i let a lot of stuff go to flower that i was pinching off throughout the season and stuff like that so it looks gorgeous this um oh i cannot remember what this coloca or something like that this is from um baker creek this coleus it really pretty i've enjoyed it everywhere i have it um this year it's a little windy i hope that that doesn't make too much of a problem for everyone but again up here you got things that are a little dried out the impatience those gotta go um anyways the coleus that's in these pots in the front um <laughs> these um mums that i got they need to get pinched back and planted up so these will go in the in the pots with uh where i have the coleus and things like that that aren't gonna make it through the frost and so what i'll do with these because these are slightly frost tender I will just push them back more towards the house overnight, which will keep them nice and warm enough when we start to get those light frosts. Uh, hanging baskets are still doing really nice. Um, petunias actually can handle a light frost. I haven't decided if I want to take them down right now or not. I am going to be doing some garden work today, um, especially in the back, taking down stuff in the kitchen garden. Um, but I haven't quite decided if I want to take the hanging baskets down yet. These baskets here with the Creeping Jenny and the Fuchsia are really just starting to look nice. It's crazy because both of these plants, well, the Creeping Jenny actually will handle a frost okay. Um, and then I think it even gets like a little bit of fall color. That is like perennial here. If I put it in the ground, it would just take over as a ground cover and um, be a little bit invasive. So I don't use it that way. But the fuchsia, let's get up cl closer on the fuchsia here so you guys can see. Yeah, so those fuchsia will not survive a frost. They won't even survive a light frost at all. Um, all the impatience will fall back. The coleus, again, that I have down here. All these, like I said, I haven't watered any of this stuff. Um, even though we've had a ton of rain, it's also been very windy. So anything in the pots um, is, is fairly dried out right now. Um, and I'm not putting any more effort into them So this past week. So uh, I'll probably end up emptying out these front pots the porch pots here at least if not um also the hanging baskets not these because they look pretty i'll wait till the frost comes and actually kills those ones back because i've waited so long for them to look so pretty um all the hostas are doing fine everything in here you know is spent and these are actually some ferns that i bought originally for the hanging baskets and lily my daughter stuck these in the ground um, they've done great. I don't know if they'll come back. I don't know what kind of ferns they are. They're just some generic ferns that I got at Walmart for the hanging baskets. Um, but they, they look nice. These are some ostrich, um, ostrich fern here. I don't know if that's going to take or not. I had a second one back here. Uh, you can kind of see the remnants of it and it didn't make it. I don't know if they'll come back next year or not. Um, all of the, um, oh my gosh, no, I'm not going to be able to think of what these are. And they're s 
such basic plants. When it comes to me, I'll talk more about them. But the ones that I have in the ground here, everything is done. Here we go, foxglove. There we go, I just needed to see a flower. All of these foxglove are doing great. Some have bloomed. As you can see some here. So um, these are the Camelot mix. So they're meant to bloom first year. Um, but I got them in the ground so late that a lot of them didn't really get the opportunity. But they've all survived and thrived really well. So I think we should have a nice show of these in the, um, in the late spring next year. Still got to get out here and pull stuff up um, with the cement. Uh, the kids are cleaning out the basement, so there's a bunch of junk over here, so we won't go down that way. Um, and look at all the junk. We'll come back out here. Uh, these begonias are pretty much spent. Everything's pretty much done out here. The um, Autumn Joy Sedum looks gorgeous gorgeous still the bees are loving it um, I love the sedum this will do fine with a light frost no problem there um, this side as well this one's much bigger but I think it's just the difference in sunlight this just gets a, like a, maybe an hour more sunlight than that side does I think that really is just makes a difference on that um, tons of um, dandelions peeking in, so I have to come out here and really do a good cleanup before the end of the season and pull a lot of these dandelions out. Um, I also have some tulips that I'm going to put in that are really pretty, like a pink and white mix, and um, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to put them. So I have tulips that line the walkway here, but I don't have anything that lines this little walkway from the road, so I may end up putting them on either side of that. Um, tulips and daffodils, so I have tulips and daffodils that line the walkway up to the stairs, and then I might do them there, or I might come through and do them up the border and just get by a ton and do like a huge border of them, which would be pretty neat as well, but I haven't decided on that yet. Um, Oh, the grass. Oh yeah, look at all the look at all the dandelions popping up in here. They're everywhere. So that cardboard, I could have put even more cardboard down than I did. Um, but yeah, this grass. If anybody knows what this is, like I said, um, this is something that I got at a plant sale. Um, she didn't have names on any of it, but it's really beautiful, and I've gotten a few heads. And a few more coming, and it's just so pretty for fall. It's nice and tall. I really like it. I'm going to leave it. I didn't know if it would get the um, the heads on it here because this is a little bit shadier um, space, but it seems really pretty, and sometimes grass can be a little bit invasive, so I don't know that I want it in a place where it's going to get crazy anyways. Um, so I think I'm going to end up leaving that there. Oh, we got one of these little day lilies still going for it. So sweet. Um, yeah, everything, the um, spirea really took well. So I'm happy with that. I still don't have the um, dogwoods in. <laughs> but um, here's uh, so pretty with this trilobo rubecchia. I love it. There's even more coming. I'm not sure how rubecchia does through a light frost, but I'm I think that it can handle a light frost, so that is great because I've got more flowers coming on here, back there. Um, this one doesn't quite have any flower heads on it yet, but yeah. And then the um, hydrangeas that I put in that I moved from the front, back here, the lace cap, um, Invincible lace doing fantastic they seem to be very much in love with this new space so no complaints from them um, I really just love the way this trilobo looks with the yellow against the house I'm gonna do this I did these from seed um, I got those seeds from I think prairie moon prairie moon nursery 
Um, and I, I think I got like a thousand of them or something. So um, easily can fill this up with that, with the um, Triloba next year. I love it. I love it against the house. I love the breeziness of it. The cats sit in the window here and watch all the bees and hummingbirds and everything and butterflies that come to sit on them and they just love it. So it's a winner all around. Ah, dogwoods. Still sitting in their pots. Hose still sitting on the ground. Okay. Let's see. So, ooh, I gotta get out here and pick this cherry tomato. Wow. A lot of rot on there. So basically, um, I've already come through and cut some stuff back. You can see the tomatoes along that back uh, cattle panel. I, I basically stripped them of everything that wasn't necessary and just left the fruit so that that can start to ripen up. There's still a ton of fruit on here, so I didn't want to just pull them out. Tomatoes have done best in the ground, so um, I have some ideas for next year that I want to do, and I'm... I'll probably talk to you guys about that in a few minutes, but um, I also got the hollyhocks out. They were falling down, so those got kind of cut in half, tossed over into the to the pile over there. William, my son, came through and cut back a lot of these trees up as high as he could. I really want to get them out of here so I can get this bed started next year. I don't know if we're going to get to that this fall or not. Um, cucumbers. These are... I thought these were the Chicago pickling, but now I'm pretty sure they're actually the salt and pepper. Salt and pepper um, from fruition seeds. Still got lots of little little cukes coming, and then um, some that I missed, or like this one is stuck behind the kennel. <laughs> so that actually is getting really close to being pickable, and so that the seeds could be saved. Um, so I just left it, and this one too. This one's not quite as far along, but it should do fine. So I can use that to save seeds for next year. Um, I had some snapdragons that I stuck in the ground over here, and I've had them sort of blooming sporadically here over the past month or so. They're so pretty. I really like them. Next year, I want to make sure that I do a better job of getting this area in between the two ends of the hollyhocks um, planted with flowers. I tried to do the, this is actually a leftover of it, but this is, um, I think it's Sunray from Burpee, and it's a small branching sunflower. Um, I had those in here from seed all through here and only the one actually ended coming up and so I I did stick some uh, snapdragons like I said in here but this is not really the best place for snapdragons so it's been very sporadic um, the the bloom because they just get blocked a lot from the sun and and then with the the growth of the the hollyhocks and the cucumbers are just very um, there's a lot there's a lot going on with the hollyhocks and the cucumbers I do have some, like a lily in here as well, like a lily bulb that got stuck in here this year. Um, so we'll see that come up next year. And I can't remember even what color it is anymore. I, and I, I go to Walmart and they have like markdowns on all of their little packages of bulbs and I just buy stuff. It's like, oh, that's a dollar? Okay, I need three of them. And, um, and then I end up sticking them in the ground wherever and I, or starting them in pots and I uh, am sometimes very bad about um, marking things so I don't remember. <laughs> I never remember what anything is, but I do try to save the actual like picture tag. So I have a whole bag of picture tags uh, for bulbs and things like that. And then when it comes up, I can go in the house and just like go through that and, and see which, which is which. Um, speaking of bulbs from Walmart, this is a dahlia that I got from Walmart. Um, big orange. And this is the one that I did get one bloom off of wicked early in the season and it, and it was pretty it was like this it was much bigger actually but um but then it took all season 
for this to bloom again. So now it's blooming, right? We're about to have frost and it's got some blooms on it. Um, dahlias, a lot of dahlias are late, so that's, it's not unusual, but, um, but I really thought they were going to be faster considering I got one. And then this one here, um, it's also putting on a little bit of bloom. Little hydrangeas up here look beautiful. Um, I'm really, really happy. Planters on the porch are kind of in the same situation as the planters out front. Um, especially, I mean, these sweet potato vines are such crybabies about water, um, but you can see even the petunias are, are like, yeah, we need water. Um, <laughs> probably beyond what will actually bring them back. So I'm going to go ahead and empty these out, clean those up. Um, the dahlias, all in all, are doing really well. The Cornell Browns, tons of blooms. I've gotten tons of blooms off of these. This star child has started to fall down, but it's been absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Even so, if I'm going to try and save the tubers from this plant. Which, as vigorous as this plant has been, I can only imagine that it has created a mass of tubers. So if I, if I have enough of them, I may try saving, you know, a few clumps in different ways. Um, because I've never had any success overwintering tubers. Um, so I may try a few different ways to see if I can at least get one clump. Because this is just one, one tuber from um, long, um, Swan Island Dahlia. Just one actual tuber, not a clump, just one. So, and it's been absolutely gorgeous and just gave, 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 gave all season long. Um, and I love it, it's really beautiful. So I'm gonna do my best on that. These little zinnias are so cute, they're so sweet. Tons of pretty little colors in here. Really like this with the darker orange in the middle. Um, they've just finally made their their growth here. They took so long in these grow bags, but they're finally here, just in time for to get frozen. <laughs> and then these are um, the. Um, these are zinnias as well. I'm trying to remember what variety they are. I want to say like infusion, but that's not it. But I'm pretty sure it starts with an I. Um, all the other zinnias are doing great. Everything has gotten super tall and is really starting to, like, especially with all the rain we've had, just start to fall over. Um, the kitchen garden is pretty much toast. I'm see. Like... Yeah, we've had a ton, a ton of rain. The ground is mushy, um, but then, like I said, it's also been windy, so the pots are not are not really holding on to the water very well. But everything else here, like I'm gonna come in, I'll probably leave most of the zinnias up until frost comes which could be any time now uh we are definitely getting down into the 30s most nights um 40s 30s so any day i could wake up and have a frost that'll kill pretty much everything um in this garden uh i have these cucumbers are done the cucumbers are starting to get a little bit of um the, uh, like mold, you know, powdery mildew. So, and I don't know exactly what this like yellow spotting is, but but just death. You know, they they've run their course, and um, I'm leaving this one up because it does have a few a few cukes coming on it, but I don't know if they'll if they'll produce into anything or not. But this one, these ones have been cut back, just not fully taken out. And this is another tomato that I cut back. Um, basically down to just the fruit and um, coming out here every day and picking them as soon as they start to turn. So um, after I'm done making this video, I'll pick this one, bringing them in the house, letting them ripen up, getting them in the freezer, 
And then once I have enough um, gallon bags, I take them and, and do a sauce or, or freeze or uh, can them whole or whatever I'm going to do with them. Um, with the larger tomatoes, um, like these terracottas, these terracottas have been fantastic. I'm super happy with these. I'll, I'll probably grow them again next year. I don't see any reason not to, but, and they're fantastic. But I roast them up with some garlic and onion and, um, and peel them out and then make tomato soup with that. And it's, it's been a, a, a huge hit in the house. So I'll probably end up growing those again next year. Of course, I always say that about tomatoes. And then I see some other variety that I'm like, oh my God, I need to try that. <laughs> and so, and then I end up going, you know, like, well, I can only grow so many varieties. I only have so much space. And uh, so we'll see if that one gets picked. But I, I think it probably will. I've, I've really enjoyed the flavor of it. And everybody has. The um, summer squash. So this is the, the green squash the zucchini this is also starting to get the powdery mildew um pretty bad everywhere and these are done um i just picked actually one decent sized zucchini off of this plant two days ago and it's done there's nothing left on it that's going to get pulled out the cosmos oh my gosh the cosmos look at this i'm torn <laughs> Um, about whether or not I should leave them up. They look, I mean, the flowers are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. There's no getting past the fact that the flowers on these plants are, are absolutely stunning, but there's a ton of death and I'm not coming out here and doing any sort of, um, pruning or anything like that. Like I said, because of the, the weather just being what it is. And so look, like, like you can see the death here, this will get cut out, but these ones, the bees are still loving it. They are, the bees are still here in force every single day, all day long, absolutely loving these cosmos. So even though there's tons of ick, I'm probably going to leave them up until the frost comes. Same thing with the zinnias. These are the queen lime mix. Those will stay up. I've got some really beautiful sunflowers. These, I believe, are one of the Pro Cut series. Maybe the Pro Cut Bicolor? Not 100%. I planted, like, uh, I don't know, probably about 10 different types of Pro Cut sunflowers through the season. So I'm not sure exactly with that. And also, I have to say, what is really putting on a show here at the end of the year is the nasturtiums. And so I left a ton of nasturtiums in that had um, volunteered from last year. And so everything, I mean, the nasturtiums are just, this peach melba nasturtium that's growing in this bed on the other side of this bed, it's all the way over here. It's all the way over into this bed. It's climbed all through this tomato plant, all up here, all through this tomato plant. It's massive. It's gorgeous. It's stunning. Um, it's, I mean, in the way it, it sort of mingles in with the other colors. Oh, this color. Oh my gosh. It's really just, this one, I'm not sure what this one is. This is not the peach melba. This is a um, one that I planted last year. Um, you can see the peach melba has the the orange streaking it's also absolutely stunning and, and it's just it, it really is breathtaking let's see when we get around the corner here and we can see look at this nasturtium <laughs> and I was kind of like oh I don't know what's gonna happen with the nasturtiums this year they were so stunning last year and it's just and it's growing out Growing out of the bed, it's stunning. It's really beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm super happy with it. <laughs> I'm gonna leave those until the frost comes. And then this one is, uh, I, 
I think it definitely is the Purple Emperor, but I thought that the Purple Emperor was going to be a much larger variety, and you can see how small these leaves are, but this has spread so much to way into the back here, um, and it's gorgeous. It goes through a few different color stages, so it starts out this deep, bloody sort of red and comes to this more muted antique red shades and then ages into this purpley shades really gorgeous really gorgeous loving it uh, so anyways so here's here's something that i kind of want to share with you guys i am thinking about reformatting the shape of the kitchen garden. Um, so the tomatoes did so much better in the ground, really, than they did in the beds. I mean, I had a few plants that really thrived uh, in the beds, but for the most part, the tomatoes were not as strong in the beds as they were in the ground over here um, on the cattle panel. Um, but I don't have space in here to, to like put tomatoes directly in the ground. So something I was thinking about is these beds, these lifetime beds. So I'm gonna have to come in and reset these anyways because they're starting to, um, like the, the dirt is just starting to shift a little bit and it's super easy. They just like interlock with each other. You know, it's not a big issue or anything like that. I just come push the dirt up after I get the beds cleared out, push the dirt up and, and lock them back together. But they actually are stackable too high. And I have 12 of them. So I have, you know, three making a corner for the four corners of the garden and then the arches. And one thing I was thinking about was um, making the beds where the arches are in two so maybe taking like that bed from there and putting it on top of this bed and then having a two high bed and a one bed and a one high bed next to it um maybe still on that side or maybe more interior like right here and then and doing that for all four corners and then doing in-ground beds um, in between so where these where these beds are that I would be sort of taking this this bed up moving it on top of this one and the same taking that bed up moving it on top of that one so then this space in between here may be creating some in-ground beds there in some way <clears throat> so a lot of it obviously will already be um you know, the grass will be um, killed off a, a lot because I, I did, um, you know, heavy cardboard and um, branches and all kinds of stuff like that in these beds last year. So now there'll be two th seasons and it'll just really be these areas where um, I will have to kind of kill stuff off. And then I can put the cattle panels here and here. And so it still keeps sort of like the square shape of the garden, um, but it does take away my ability to walk in and out of the garden right here. But if I, like those cattle panels, I think they're only eight feet. So I would actually, if I wanted to, I could have a little space like on this side of the cattle panel, this side of the cattle panel, or, you know, just move it very close to one of the beds. I don't know. <clears throat> I haven't decided yet, <laughs> but I'm thinking about it. Um, and then having something deeper here, um, at least a few beds that are a little bit deeper, a little bit higher to um, be more comfortable on my back. But yeah, so that's all I'm thinking about. That's where I'm at. I'm going to come through now that we have the video made here. I'm going to come through and... Um, and start working um, on cleaning everything up. 
and I'll probably make another short little video just to show you guys what it looks like cleaned up and then of course um, there's still tons of work to be done um, I'm gonna be planting garlic I'm gonna be planting more tulips um, more daffodils I want to definitely get uh, a lot more of that um, cement pulled up over there and everything like that so I still have a good a oh, month and a half of time where I could be out here working um, so yeah so I'll come back and do a short of what it looks like with everything pulled down and then we'll talk about the rest of my projects for the year and then what we're gonna do this winter all right thanks to my family I love you guys so much I know that I haven't been on here um, in a few weeks and I love you and I miss you and to everyone else thank you for being here I appreciate you Bye.